<laughs> Input is uh, one of my favorite themes. It's a fantastic strategic thinking theme. And today we've got a phenomenal manager, a leader, who's going to be able to talk about what this looks like in leaders. If you've downloaded the companion guide, you'll want to follow along. If you haven't, you want to do that right now. So you can press pause, even though this is a live podcast, press pause and go download that companion guide. The first thing you're going to understand is that long definition of input. Just a few of the words that I love in that definition. Inquisitive, uh, a collector. You might collect a lot of different things. Now you might be collecting words, facts, books, quotations statistics, data. Often when I coach leaders, I'll ask them if they even collect people uh, because input is the, the joy of the absorption. Absorption. Uh, collect tangible objects. My mom's an artist and her, her specific medium of choice is collage, multimedia collage. She leads with input as well as ideation and intellection and she's always collecting something for the idea that someday this could have an artistic quality to it. I could use it someday. There's that element of utility to input that helps us really define what it is. It's not just take it all in. It's, it's not necessarily hoarding, um, but it is uh, you're collecting things really with the motivation that that could lead you to a discovery someday or, or that the, that the act of collecting, the act of absorbing information helps you sort through decisions in your mind. Um, it's a complex theme. Um, it's, 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 I think, an openness to complexity and an openness to variety. Um, if you read, uh, it's probably not necessarily just to refine your own theories, but to open your own mind into thinking about theories that you might be interested in. And I think that helps us really understand a lot of the openness that that input brings to the table. In a moment, we'll talk about what it looks like in a leader. And I think that's one of the pieces is because input can never really be full. Um, in input, maybe there's something to that there. Is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? Somebody with input will find a way if the glass was of information, um, the glass would just never be full. And, and the positivity slant on that would be there's always more that you can take in. Um, I, I speak with, I work with a lot of folks who have high input and I find that if I've ever got a question, I tend to go to them first. I think about them almost as my my walking encyclopedia of of stored knowledge, stored stories, store, stored understanding. Um, just to real de really define input, to, to round that out, I find another a few more uh, sort of helpful phrases in this definition. With all the possible uses for what you collect sort of swimming around in your mind, you probably don't feel comfortable discarding information or, or throwing it away. So you keep acquiring, you keep compiling, you keep filing, maybe even filing things away because it's interesting, because it's how you stay fresh, relevant, aware, and, and really present. Uh, there is always that whisper of, of potential utility, I think, in the back of a leader's mind with high input. It's perhaps someday something that you come across is going to prove Prove, prove valuable either for you or for someone else. Um, so input, just to define it, is the ability just to take in and to absorb and collect information. Look like um, in a leader, I think about really how this could be great for a leader if as an individual, Individual input makes means that you gather information that you that might have use. I think as a leader, it's your role to target that a little bit more. Um, I think a leader with input might say something like, "I collect and absorb to inform." the performance open-mindedness to leadership because of that infinite potential to locate sources to come up with angles that haven't been thought of before uh, to collect ideas or encourage through information um, and to think about more stories I love inputs um, ability to never be satiated uh, and I think that that creates a lot of possibility for people a lot of opportunities to come up with different ways that you can think about solving a problem um, very often we talk in our in our courses sometimes here at Gallup about David Maester's um, formula for building trust and we talk about it being um, credibility plus reliability plus intimacy divided by all of that divided by self-orientation so if it's not about you um, it, it, you're gonna you're gonna be able to or if you're oriented toward others you'll be able to create 
trust a lot more quickly. But I want to take us to the um, to the top of that equation, thinking about credibility plus reliability plus intimacy, and how all. All three of them really do to being somebody who collects information. I think it makes you more credible when you can say, I didn't just come up with this in my gut, but I read an article or I cited a journal or I learned this from somebody, that credibility piece. I also think about when I've partnered with folks with high um, input and how reliability really, really uh, credits itself to that piece. Thinking about, I can always count on Mike, for example, for having some information so that I'm never walking in cold. And you'll get to meet Mike here in a second, but think about what that does in a leadership um, place where others are looking to you for direction, for creating an environment, and they know that they can rely upon your thought process to be not only yours, but to have some sort of nugget that's going to start. So you're not, you're never really starting from ground zero. Um, the intimacy part of that equation could come from personalizing the information that you're collecting, learning the stories of other people. Want to encourage folks to think about it having that desire for utility. Um, it, now, how something's going to be used, or or where it's going to be used, or the certainty that it will be used, it's okay for that typically to remain a mystery. I, I think that probably is one of the things that differentiates input from learner, is it's not gathering necessarily for immediate use, um, but it is a real love and a real, I think, desire to absorb with a what if in mind. If you're a leader with input, you might consider about uh, just just filing or sorting your current collection into categories that solve current problems. So really investing in that input with the, the mentality of relevance. Um, feed your input by hunting and gathering um, uh, information that is relative to, to the challenge that's right in front of you uh, or relative to the challenge that the individuals on your team or your organization may be facing. What you're doing then is you're taking this natural talent and you're aiming it in a way that it can truly perform as a strength, really thinking about being intentional with that input. Leaders might think about building their input is finding and and returning to their best go to sources of input in many ways raw input um, and I don't mean raw with a negative slant raw can just be give it all to me I, I'm not going to um, to discern where it comes from any information is great information I think uh, as you learn and as you find what resonates with others think about where you're getting your best information where you're getting information that motivates people where you're getting information that that inspires people or that makes somebody truly learn and clarify something and then that would even just be answering the question, what are your favorite blogs? What are your favorite professional magazines? Who are your favorite storytellers? How are you capturing time that others might consider to be downtime? Jim, maybe that's in a car, on a plane, on a train. <laughs> How are you using that? Um, in a way that um, that you know that spending time in that sort of gathering and absorbing phase is actually you spending time doing work. Um, if you're somebody with high input and it feels like you're the only person who doesn't who's who needs to spend some time really thinking and gathering before you take action, that can feel like a lonely place to be. But the work you do, researching, gathering. Um, thinking and musing and, and finding information really will help you focus your energy that will help you create clarity that act of um, of finding the information is you doing work I also think um, honing that talent by experimenting with the best way that you can recall information how is it that you offer what you know in a way that obviously communicates support to others. Um, as a leader, I think you have a different uh, responsibility than an individual contributor, and that is to um, step up to the plate and understand that you create an environment that others don't just by the very nature of your, of your position. So how can you create an obvious link between what you're collecting and how that is affecting the environment of the people around you?
The last thing I want to dive into on, on the front page of that companion guide are the four needs of followers. Um, so we talk about stability, trust, compassion, and hope. And I'll ask Mike about this um, as soon as I give sort of my take on it. But I, as I was thinking about input last night, I was just thinking, um, what could a leader do on purpose to grow that talent into a place where it translates into these four needs? Um, first, I'd like to talk about compassion. A leader with, um, with input can build compassion by gathering stories of people. Uh, not just by gathering information, but by being intentional about um, considering the stories of the people on your team. as And that could be a really quick way to build relationships and to communicate love. Um, knowledge nuggets communicate that you care. Um, share them on purpose. It might mean, hey, I read this really interesting book that I think will resonate with you. Um, so here it is. Um, or, or, hey, I came across some information that is relevant to what your current challenge is. Or, did you know that I have this, I, I learned a, a unique statistic that you could use the next time that you teach this, uh, if you're somebody who's, who's leading teachers. A leader with input can build stability by not just collecting, but collecting information that your team will benefit from. Create a sense of focus create a sense of support. We know that first item on our engagement survey, um, it, understanding what it is I need to do every day, is shockingly difficult for folks to strongly agree with. Um, about half of our database cannot strongly agree with, at work I understand what's expected of me. Um, and I think a lot of that leads to instability. Somebody with input can help make that better by exploring topics that feel relevant and that re Emphasize what the expectations are. With input could build trust by validating your sources, by, by um, being able to know um, that you're not just going to bring any information, but that you're going to bring information that is credible. Uh, and you might even want to be able to talk about that, not just here's something I know, but here's why I know it to be true. I also think you can build trust by thinking about being known for expertise in a certain subject area and allowing yourself to explore and enjoy really going deep in one area. Let's talk about hope, that idea that input can build hope. I think input can build hope through a leader by sharing openings through information when others seem stuck. It brings me back to that beautiful open-mindedness of input. Um, what do you have access to that can help people think beyond their current situation? You probably can, can use information in a way when sometimes people feel stuck and we go into that survey survival mode of just do what's right in front of me. I think input can open our brain to other possibilities through sharing other ideas and, and other information.